James Kaufman, World News Report, today, October 7th, 2024. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, we've had another X flare of our same old sunspot friend, AR3842. This was an X 2.1 class solar flare. It has just occurred and is just subsiding. In fact, we had a 30% chance of having an X class solar flare today and a 75% chance of an M class solar flare today. You can see that, in fact, we did have an X 2.19 solar flare generated by Sunspot AR3842 and peaking at 1913 UTC time which is 2.13 Central Time here in the U.S. Now, taking a look at our sun, it doesn't look too awful, but 38.48 is directly Earth-facing, and that's been giving us some heck over the last week or so. But 38.42 is all the way around towards the departing side of our sun. And we'll have to wait and see if this is geo-effective towards Earth. To start with, we saw no reaction in the GOES proton flux or proton count whatsoever. And we saw absolutely nothing occur with our electron count as well. So... I'm thinking that this might not be headed towards Earth or didn't create a chrome mass ejection. Headed over to our D region absorption prediction center, we see that there's not a huge signature as far as the X flare. This is the X flare's actual peak here, seems to have hit right off Central America, North America. In South America in the Pacific and this compares to many of the smaller M flares as far as radio alternation here so I don't know if again this was earth directed but it is on a sunspot that is on the earth facing side of our solar disk now to the freaky part of our report here we ended up being hit I guess by a CME we'll take a look at what that looks like on the two satellites it's really hard to justify these KP indexes I will say based on the data on discover and ace but I will say that NOAA and NASA have marked here 12 hours of a G1 geomagnetic storm finished up by a G2 moderate geomagnetic storm here. Now we're back out of storm conditions at this point, but let's take a look at the data and see what spaceweather.com has to say about this. All right, taking a look at the data, the day started right here. That is 7 p.m. last night, Central Time. And this is the peak of the show here, 21 centimeters cubed of plasma. And there's not another time during the day, although the G2 KP index marking was much further into the day, that we see any other plasma anywhere near this high. Now we see, let's see if we can pick, pick that one dot up. One dot of 16.66. Maybe that's a message. And we see one dot here of 16.13. These wouldn't even register as a G1 geomagnetic storm on any other day. But today they've, well, peaked at a G2 moderate. And everything else you see here is below 10 centimeters cubed, which is the space weather threshold. Now, all of y'all know that a chrome mass ejection is plasma, right? I don't know what would have caused this, well, 
10, 20 minute jump in solar winds here either. Our temperatures did, in fact, heat up during these spikes in plasma, but again, 21.88 centimeters cubed of plasma was our peak. And well, the KP index shows our peak some somewhere in this part of the day with 1.7, 1.7, 3.5, 1.7, 3.5, 3.2 centimeters cubed on any other day this would well of course not be a g2 geomagnetic storm our winds are down at 442 and our plasma stays below three four centimeters at its peak here see if we can grab something a little higher 5.41 would be the peak during this time period and the winds are at 441 temperatures are very mild yet we get a kp2 index on the kp index the estimated planetary kp index i.e nasa and noah's baby now let's continue and we will check our work on ace now, i'm personally just not feeling it with NASA and NOAA currently, again, you'll see the 20 centimeters cubed here, which could have been a G1 geomagnetic storm, although very short-lived for an impact from a coronal mass ejection, then all the way down to baseline levels, zero where it came from before that peak. And we had one other time that went over 10 centimeters cubed the entire day. But again, they said that we had 12 hours of a G1 geomagnetic storm and 3 hours of a G2 geomagnetic storm. Well, usually that shows up on the data, right? Now, spaceweather.com had some pictures of some aurora borealises. They said they only lasted 5 to 10 minutes. This would be when the plasma hit 21 centimeters cubed. This was taken in Cape cod there were also other pictures taken in the northern and even mississippi however this was very short term according to spaceweather.com the cme was hurled towards earth by a powerful x 9.1 class solar flare on october 3rd considering the size of the flare and the coronal mass ejection the CME did not deliver much of a blow. The forecast was rescued by the autumnal Russell McPherson effect. At this time of year, even a weak CME can cause a geomagnetic storm of a G1 or G2, mild or moderate. So this is what we have. But again, I trust NASA know at this point about as far as I can throw them, although we did have five to ten minutes of Aurora Borealis, even though they show 12 hours of G1 geomagnetic storms and three hours of G2 moderate geomagnetic storms. You'll have to tell me what you think in the comments below. Meanwhile, Milton has grown into a Category 5. And that video will be up next. God bless you guys. Stay safe. This is going to be one heck of a hurricane. Please share, please subscribe, and always remember, anything's possible in Bizarro World.